right, so today we're going to do basically a 20 hour review of the grass flap model 42B uh, OCDC shoot blocker. And I want to I wanna just not just give you my general opinion on it, uh, but I also want to give you some workarounds. If you followed me now for the few years, three years or whatever that I've been doing YouTube videos, I don't just buy a product and then do a review and throw it up on the internet. Um, based on a minute of use. I like to use it for a while. I like to figure out what makes it work, where's its downfalls, and how do I overcome the downfalls? Uh, because, well, first of all, grass flap and nobody is endorsing me. My channel is not endorsed or sponsored by anybody at this time. Um, things are subject to change, but at this moment, nobody is in talks with me for endorsement or sponsorship. So I think that's really important that you guys understand my reviews or my personal opinion, pro or con, you know, good or bad, zero stars to five stars. It's based on my usage and my reputation when I put my name behind it as good or bad. Um, and I take that very seriously. So I like to use a product for a good amount of time before I give a review. I might give an, an initial review and I'll clearly say, hey, this is just an initial review. This is what happened. This is what I think right off the bat to give you fair warning, like let's say poor shipping or let's say incredibly fast shipping. Uh, I, might, I might be so impressed or I might be so disappointed. Um, but after now about 30 hours of using this, uh, I got like 39 or 40 hours on my hour meter and I got this somewhere around 10, 12, 15 hours, I don't know. Um, I think I got it pretty much figured out. So right off the bat, I did an installation video, so we're not going to go back over the actual installation of the Grass Flap 42B model. Um, I think it's a pretty general, uh, basic installation for all equipment, whether it's a walk behind, a stander, or a zero turn. You're just going to have a little bit of different configurations with how you route your cable, maybe a few little different things here. but. For the general, that video should work really well for you, and I'll link to that up here. Um, but the grass flap itself, having this grass flap, the question is, does it save you time? And, and I'm only talking about this particular model. However, I'm sure this works for every model out there, whether it's the kick pedal like this with the cable drive, or if it's the lever that has the mechanism that comes up to the handle. Having a, a grass flap that you can open and close manually is a godsend. It saves you an incredible amount of time over having an open chute where even if you have to shoot down, you still are blowing clippings out and you still have to chase clippings to the point to where you might give up and have to rake. And now you got a bag you got to leave at the customer's house or you got a bag you got to take with you or you got to stop to rake. Sometimes you need to do that, but in a basic weekly or bi-weekly lawn most of the time we don't want to rake we want to mow and go that's why we spend three four five seven ten thousand dollars on a mower we want to mow and go um, so having a grass flap being able to shut your shoe much like a mulch plate is amazing because you're not chasing the clippings anymore so whether you mow the middle out first and throw everything into the middle you know your clippings into the middle and then shut the chute and mulch it up and then open the chute at the end and blow away your dust. Um, you can do it that way or you can keep the chute down and just mulch as you go. However, just closing your chute with mulching blades is not as good as a mulch kit that has the baffles, but having a mulch kit that has the baffles and having your deck completely closed off limits you tremendously for future services with thick yards or anything like that where you want your chute to be open so you can get the clippings out from under your deck and continue mowing at speed. Um, so having the chute blocker being able to open and close is just amazing. It, it, it saves you an incredible amount of time. Um, and it takes a lot of stress off of your mower. You're not lugging it. You're not dulling your blades out instantly by mulching thick stuff. You can get that stuff out from underneath your deck and keep mowing. Um, it also allows for good wind, vacuum, and expulsion of leaves and stuff like that that might be on the property. 
So overall, having an OCDC shoot blocker, regardless of the brand, regardless of the model, whether it's cable driven or hand lever, is to me, five stars. Add it to your machine. If you don't have one, get one. If you have a mulch kit on it, take it off. This is awesome, all right? I mean, it really, really is awesome. I would get one, in general, an OCDC shoot blocker. I'm not saying get a grass flap, I'm saying get one. Now, I got one. I got the grass flap. I got the Model 42B. That's what fits this walk behind. This is an X Mark 36 inch uh, S series turf tracer. All right. The reason why I went with this model is because I didn't want that metal mechanism coming up here. I didn't want to have to drill up here. I didn't want to have to do things to the top of my mower. I didn't want a lever that I had to mess with or anything like that. Um, when I saw this on the internet, I read some of the reviews, but I watched some of the videos and I watched the video from the, the company itself and I was impressed. I thought this was going to be something that is easy to mount and my video shows that it is and I thought it was going to be something with the cable that was going to give a nice, neat, clean appearance to my mower and it does. There's no, there's nothing here to get caught on a tree limb or anything like that. I really don't like that at all. Um, and so this, this really served the purpose for what I was looking for. Nice, neat, and clean. That was really important to me. Let me show you the back of the pedal. So you, you see how the pedal mounts here, right? It's just a few bolts. It mounts right on. For this particular model, for this particular mower, the holes are already drilled. Like right here, they're already drilled. So all you had to do is mount up the pedal. Super simple to do. And run your cable through. Super simple to do. Installation video shows you how to do that. Please check it out. Um, but here's the cable right here, all right? And you just, you just do that with your foot. Now it's open, now it's closed. Well, I didn't make it. Now it's open, now it's closed. Sorry about the noise. But that's how easy it is to do. Um, so you're walking along, when you wanna make a change, pow, you hit it with your foot. When you wanna make a change, pow, you hit it with your foot. Your hands never have to leave the controls kind of nice. That's kind of nice to be able to do. Um, that's a pro as well. So clean installation, easy to install, cable driven, no long mechanism going down to get caught on things, pedal operated, hands never have to leave the controls. Those are all pros. Okay, now I left my tools out because before I was doing this review video, I made some fine tune adjustments that I probably should have done a long time ago, um, but I didn't because I just wanted to keep using this machine, using this unit, uh, and figure its ins and outs and make my adjustments ahead of time, or later on, and so that's what I did. Here is what I did. I adjusted two bolts right here that slides this unit in and out. If you slide it in, it's going to pull it this way and the chute will be open. Can you see that? If you're looking right here, if you slide this mount in, the chute will be open as it pulls this this way. If you slide it this way, the chute will be closed, but then you're going to have an air gap up here because now you're sliding it like this. Let's exaggerate it, but now you're going like this. So you have to find that sweet spot, that happy medium. And I've read reviews, and I actually checked out a review today that's right under my review. Mine's Daniel E. Um, the guy gave it like one star, and he said that it doesn't close all the way, and it's still putting clippings in his flower beds. Well, he didn't take it to the level that you should, which is make your adjustments. And this slides, and the instruction book clearly tells you that this slides, all right? This makes little adjustments. If you, like I said, if you slide it this way, it'll be open, and you're gonna get grass and stuff blowing out going into your flower beds. If it's too much this way, it'll be open up here, and grass will be coming out and going into your flower beds. You have to mount this perfect. And a, and a way to do that would be to take vice grips right here and right here and clip it right there so it's sealed. And then make your final tight right here where it needs to be, all right? Don't be afraid to take a little hammer and tap it here and you tap it here and you move it until you get it perfectly flush, okay? That's number one. He failed to do that and he gave it a poor review. Um, a lot of poor reviews I don't take to heart because I always figure about 95% of poor reviews is user error. And that was user error. 
Number two, another thing that you have to do with this unit is you have to adjust this spring, okay? Adjusting this spring makes it so the door is not going to blow open under pressure from clippings blowing against it from your blades. I've noticed and people have commented, hey Dan, even with your shoot blocker, it looks like grass is blowing out. And it was. This would cough. If I was really doing some thick stuff, this would cough. Also, I didn't have it adjusted perfectly, so some was leaking out. I never complained about that because I knew it was user error. However, I've made the adjustment now. I've made it so this is flat, and I've tightened this spring. There's a bolt right here. You tighten this bolt, you pull this spring, and that spring pulls it tight. And then when it comes up here and you hit it with your foot, it'll open it and hold it tight in the up position. If that spring is loose, then grass blowing and the wind blowing could be blowing this open and letting your clipping cough. Now, there's no level of tightness on this spring that's going to stop cross blades doing a whole lot of crap from coughing it out. It's just gonna happen. It's gonna overcome that. That's not a fault on this. That's a fault on me. I should stop and rake. I mean, there's a limit to everything, and I'm beyond the limit of this particular unit when I'm cross-blading, creating that much wind and having that much volume of clippings. So I'm not stupid that way. I know that it's my fault. It's not the unit's fault. So something, something that everybody needs to, to pay attention to, okay? Properly install it according to the manual. The manual tells you exactly what I just told you guys to do, but people don't take it to that level or they just don't know how. So there you go. Adjust it this way and adjust your spring tight. I got it tight. There's only about a half inch right here of spring left. I got this spring tight. That's holding it pretty tight. All right. Um, so I think overall the construction of this, totally five stars. This thing's bad to the bone. It's thick. It's heavy duty. Really nice. Cable right here, very nice and clean. Really nice. Spring works great. Exactly the way I expected this thing to work, it works. Would I buy this again? Absolutely. Absolutely. But let's talk about some of the cons. One of the biggest problems I have with this is me. You may have seen in some of my videos I'll be walking along and I'll make a turn and I want to close my chute and I'm going like this. And I'm missing the pedal or There we go, now I got it open. I'm not getting the contact right. There's closed, there's open. There's closed, there's open. If I think about it, if I concentrate, and if I do it properly, I can get it on the first shot, open and close. But when you're walking, and you're not really paying attention, and you got your music playing, or you listen to talk radio, and you're getting frustrated about something, or you're hot and you're sweaty, you're rushing, it's lightning, and you sit there and you, and you, you don't get it. And then you get it. And then you don't get it. And then you miss. That's happening. That's happening to me, and it's on video. And I've intentionally have not edited that part of my videos out. And I've been waiting for people to comment and say, hey Dan, looks like you're kind of having a hard time kicking the pedal. Um, design flaw? Blind as a melon, don't know where it is. Yeah, not a design flaw. It's right there. It's not their fault. It's right where they told me to put it. That's where it's at. The problem is, I'm not concentrating. If I concentrate, I can get it. If I concentrate, I can get it. And I'm getting better at it. It's just, you start moving, you're rushing, and you don't hit it right. And so you don't get it the first time. And you guys have seen that. The correct thing to do is when you get to the end of your pass and you know you need to make a change, hold your controls, give it the shot, and then go. If, if you can't do that, then that's your fault. It's not the unit's fault. And so I can't fault it for that. However, I can say on a level of convenience, I'd be willing to bet the lever right here is more convenient in that sense. However, if you're mowing along and you're going to make a turn with a walk behind, 
you need to hold this handle to make your turn, whether it's hydro or belt driven. So how are you going to hold this handle and make your turn and smoothly open or close your chute? Well, that's what you'd have to do. You'd have to cross up to do it. All right. Um, or you would stop, open your chute, and go. If you're going to do that, then you can stop, open your chute, and go. Same thing. So six to one, half a dozen to the other. When you see me struggling to hit that pedal and I'm missing the pedal, um, it's kind of like the same thing as having to cross up and do this. If I think about it, I'll get it every time. If I think about it, but if I'm just mowing along, fat, happy, and dumb, and I hit it, sometimes I miss it. Now my knee has never hit up here, and I thought that it might. It's never done that. Um, I happen to have perfectly length legs for life in general, for society, as a man goes, um, and they're attached to this finely sculpted body. I've never hit my knee up here, knock on wood. That might happen, especially if I go up a hill and I'm still standing down and the mower starts to go up and the handle comes down, I might hit my knee and I bet that's gonna hurt, but it hasn't happened yet and I don't see that it's going to happen because I walk back here and I kick it uh, you know, I'm like this when I kick it. I don't go like this. So it's, I don't think that's going to happen. That was a concern that I mentioned in, in the installation video that I might do that. I won't do that. Um, so I'm going to say in general, about 99% of all of the issues with this unit from things that I read um, with people is user error, installation error, and improper maintenance. I changed the oil in my mower the other day, uh, 20W50 for these really hot climates right now that we're in, um, 20W50, and I went ahead and I lubricated the cable. If you don't lubricate the cable to this unit, you're getting dust, dirt, moisture in there, it, they're going to break. You have to lubricate your cable. It says it in the book, so just do it. It only takes a second, shot of some WD-40, some bicycle brake cable lube. Um, anything like that will work. Get it in there and it'll work its way through. So um, maintenance, proper installation, concentrating when you use it. All right, you're using a mower. It's, a, it's something that you need to concentrate on anyway. So just take a second and think about moving that lever. Think about kicking that pedal and do it right. Well, I got two yards I got to do today. Uh, it's Saturday morning. It's raining as you might see on the camera lens. I'm going to go ahead and put this on the trailer and put the trailer back in the garage and see what happens. we got like 80% chance of rain today. Two yards down the street, easy to do. Uh, so I'll be back on the next video. We'll be cutting those yards, whether it's today, tomorrow, or Monday. We're going to get to them. Um, final result for the grass flap, OCDC, model 42B, absolutely $300 shipped to your door. Totally worth it. Every penny, in my opinion, worth it every penny. Um, saves you a lot of time, saves you a lot of grief, uh, and it's much safer than an open chute even with the, the plastic um, standard chute that comes with it. Anytime you got a doubt, shut that heavy duty door, ain't nothing coming out of there with any force that's going to hurt anybody or, or damage any, any property. And that right there could be uh, incredibly important. All right, so that's it. That's my two cents on the grass flap model 42B. Uh, I'll see you guys on the Tell me about the whistles. The whistles.